Hello and welcome to this video on how to set up the LS hardware station for EFT devices. My name is Elizabeth and I am in the LS Central POS development team. The LS hardware station is a communication service between the LS Central POS and devices such as printers, drawers, scanner, line display and EFT devices. The first thing I'm going to do in order to set up the LS hardware station is to install the client components that come with the toolbox in the LS Central release packets. As you can see, we can select the hardware station service here, click next and then finish the install. To verify that the hardware station service was installed successfully, you can find it here. Let's start the service. Now I should be able to open the management portal in a browser. The portal is used for all management of the hardware station, such as creating devices and configuring the startup. The default path for the management portal is localhost 8088, but if you want to access the portal from a different machine, you would use the IP address of the service that is hosting the hardware station service, for example like this. This could, for example, be if my hardware station service is set up on a computer in the store and I would want to use another one to set things up. Here you can see a device list where you can add all the devices that you want to use in your setup. If you click here, you can see the fields for the server config of the hardware station and management portal. So we have a field for the host name and here we have the port numbers in use, both for the portal and the service. There's also a possibility to host the hardware station on a secure connection with HTTPS, um, but there are some additional setup steps required if you're going to use that. I will leave a link to the online help for instructions if you want to look further into that. You can use virtual devices for testing purposes with the hardware station. To do that, uh, you place a check mark in this field and click the load button. Then you run the virtual station as administrator. It is located here by default. Then you start the hardware station service in services. And of course, if you're going to use the virtual station with the POS, you need to have a pro hardware profile configured in the LS Central back office for the POS terminal. I will go over the hardware profile setup later in the video. We can also set a lock level here for the hardware station and a lock path. I do recommend that you keep the default settings but if you want to change the log path, you must make sure that the user has permission to write to the folder. Also, if you run into any problems that might need support from LS Retail, it is important to have the log level set to debug mode to make it easier for our developers to figure out what the problem might be. Here you can see the log files at their default path. This is where you'll find all config files for your devices and log files for the hardware station and LSP. So, let's dive in and create some devices. As you can see, I have no devices here on the initial setup. I do recommend that you create each device that you're going to use separately instead of using the load all devices button. This button loads all OPOS devices that have been set up in the registry of the machine that is hosting the hardware station service. In some cases, that can be a lot of devices that are loaded at once, which might cause problems. This can also complicate the setup, so I highly recommend that you create each and every device that you're going to use separately, and don't keep anything here that you're not using. First off, I'm going to create an EFT device. I'll add an ID for the device. And since I'm using the LS Pay plugin, I don't need to change anything here. I just need to select my payment provider. Let's start with ATN. As you can see, I now have one EFT device in my list. I select my device and now I can see the configuration fields for my EFT setup. Please note that there are different settings required depending on which payment provider you are using. I will provide the link uh, to the LS Pay help. Now, just to show you, let's create another device. I add the ID for it, and this time I'm selecting PayX. 
Now I have two devices, one for PayX and the other one for ATN. As you can see, the configuration fields are not the same for PayX and ATN. Since I'm only going to use one EFT device in this setup, I will remove the other one. This is the device I will use, so I need to load it after I have done my configuration. My EFT device has now been loaded and I'm able to perform a test purchase to see if it's working properly. In most cases, the only test tool I use is the purchase button. I simply press the button, enter an amount, enter a currency code and click OK. Now the amount has been sent to the EFT device and I can finalize the test purchase with a card or press cancel on the EFT device. Now we have verified that the device is connected and ready for use. The next thing I want to do is to create a printer. I open the printers tab and click create printer. I type in an ID for it and here I get a list of Opus printers that are available to me. This means printers that have already been set up with Opus drivers in the registry. I select my printer and click load device. Now I have my printer here. I don't really do any configurations for the printer in the management portal. I can test it in the test tool. I just click print receipt and type in some text here and press OK. If the printer is connected correctly, it should print my text. So now we have set up an EFT device and a printer uh, in the management portal. The other devices such as drawers or scanners can be set up just as easily as the printer you just need to make sure that the Opus drivers are set up for them first. Since I don't need that for now, I'm ready to set things up for our POS in the LS Central back office. Let's open the web client. First off, I'm going to verify that my retail user is set up with a terminal. Here I have selected a post terminal. This terminal comes with the LS Central demo database. Now let's open the terminal to see which hardware profile is in use. Then I open the hardware profile where I can add my hardware from the hardware station. I click edit and go to the LS hardware station fast tab. I select sync with hardware station and in the hardware station host field I type either localhost or the IP address of the device that is hosting the hardware station service. When I have done that, I can simply press the Detect Hardware button here and everything that has been set up in the management portal will be added to my hardware profile. As you can see, my printer and EFT device have been added to the hardware profile. I can open my printer card and edit the settings. For example, if I want to have a certain character set, I can add it here or set the printer cut percentage. Those are all settings for the printer. We can also open the pause EFT card and edit our settings for the EFT. Here we have a field for currency code. This should be the currency code that the EFT device is set up for and should match. For example, if our EFT device is set up for Swedish Krona, we would set it here. However, if we have a currency code set on our store card and it is the same as the one on the device, we don't have to set it here. We just have to make sure that there isn't a mismatch between the EFT device and the setup in LS Central. Otherwise, we will get an error from the device. Now, I'm going to run the POS terminal and create a transaction with EFT payment. Here I have logged into the POS and I add some items to my journal. I press total and select card payment. I get a dialog that shows me that an EFT transaction is being initiated. Here you can see a cancel button. This button allows the user to try to cancel a transaction. However, it depends on the payment provider and how far the transaction process has gone if this is possible. If cancellation is not allowed, then the process will continue. In that case, the user can try to use the cancel button on the EFT device itself. 
I'm going to finalize the transaction, so I swipe the card, and when the payment has been processed, I get my receipt. Once the transaction is finished, you can look into the postcard entries table for information on the transaction. Before finishing up, I want to show you our online help. Here you can find further information on the LS Hardware Station and LS Central. Here is information for the HTTPS setup and other help regarding the Hardware Station. I'll leave a link for you with the video. This was it for now. Thank you for watching.